Hey friends, uh, Miranda here. Thanks for pressing play. Um, I just wanted to kind of have an interesting way of, of letting you guys stream these songs in the order that we released them originally. So six years ago, 2014, um, I started with my friend Robert, we started recording these songs. And the first four that we did were It's Merry Christmas Time, Lo How I Rose, Air Blooming, and uh, Peace on Earth Tonight, which is an original and Oh Holy Night. There will be a link just below this video where you can go stream those. Um, the rest of the video is me and Robert geeking out about making these songs. So if you're into that sort of thing, uh, here's a few minutes um, from me and Robert um, about making these four songs. Tomorrow, I will release another video of us talking about the songs we did in 2015, so on and so forth, until we get to release day. So hope you enjoy listening, hope you enjoy watching. Um, and if you do, please like it, share it, um, comment, all of those things help. So again, all proceeds go to Vela uh, families. Check out the previous video to find out more about them. Have a great day. Bye. It's Robert Harrison. Yes. Thank you so much for sitting down with me to talk about this project. Um, it is a lengthy one. It's ha It's kind of happened over several years but um for those of you that are watching thank you for watching um it was a it's kind of a long story so i didn't know how to to tell it and how to go about it so i thought maybe just fun little sit down interviews sure. would be fun um so well i can tell you how i tell the story yeah why don't you do it there you go well i met this young woman who's very eager to make music back in 2008 mm -hmm. and I met her through the amazing George Reef, who's well represented on mm -hmm. this recording. And Joshua Zarbo, both of those guys. And Joshua Zarbo, yeah. but it was George who called me and said, I've met someone, I think you need to make a record with her. We got together, and over time we decided to make a record, which was Change a Thing. Mm -hmm. And then we, we didn't fall out of touch, but you know, life yeah. happens and years passed, and then I heard from Miranda, said, I don't really have time now that I have children, to devote myself to a music career as such, but I want to make Christmas songs. Mm. So we were able to do a few every year. Yeah. And we couldn't do 12 songs at one time. You didn't have time. I didn't right. have time. Mm -hmm. But every year we, we bit off a few more. Right. When we started in 2014, actually, I had a two and a half year old mm -hmm. and a six month old, I think. Yeah, a six month old. So I definitely didn't have time to do a full length, but we were able to do four songs. Um, Four songs the first year. That's yeah, right. that first That's year, right. and uh, that was your studio out in the country, and it was just a great little vibey, sp a space that you actually designed built, right. and built, and it was so it just and it was in the woods, and you just felt very private, and it felt kind of magical. And the thing I loved about that space was it had one big control room and tracking room. And then your monitoring space was outside on the front porch. <laughs> That's right, right, right. And right. you would, we oh, would yeah. hook in the speakers, and we would sit out on the porch and listen. And the coolest thing to me that from that year was that um, we were actually tracking drums with Rick Richards, and uh, and I look up and the I mean the rafters were twenty five feet mm -hmm. in the end. They were up there, yeah, yeah, probably about twenty feet, yeah. Yeah, and I look up and there's this little baby owl. Oh, that's right. That's just sitting there in the oh, rafters wow. of the the overhang in, at a studio, and it hung out there with us all day. Just yeah, was there at a us. couple of days, I think. Oh yeah, just beautiful. And so that's where the the album cover came from. The shamanic yeah. uh, animal <laughs> presence. Yeah, my friend Brady Black of Serious Creatures. Uh, you should look him up because his work is really really great. So yeah, the first four songs we did were "It's Merry Christmas Time," mm -hmm. which was. Um, the first, the, the single, and still is. Um, and that one was a funny story because I had written most of it, but I was like, you know, it needs to be like, it's I think it was called Magic Christmas Time, it's wonder, Jolly, won wondrous, wondrous Christmas Time. It's you wondrous had, you had, you had, Christmas you had, And time. when we work together, one of the great things, I, I work with a lot of artists, and I often start with trying to help them get their songs into recording recording ready and sometimes mm -hmm. that's compositional work and oftentimes you do that and then you see the artist mm -hmm. years later and it's kind of the same thing well mm -hmm. to my delight when we got back together I was like wow these songs I, 
they're done. Oh, they're kind. I mean, especially "Peace on Earth." It mm-hmm. was just really a very together song. And so, the one thing I had an issue with, like this wondrous Christmas time, it's a bit of a mouthful. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you need another two-syllable word in front of Christmas. And so we went back and forth. We slept on it actually. We it was took like a day. it took it took a while. And then I just called and left a message, <laughs> and I said. I have a two-syllable word bef- that goes before Christmas, and I want you and Luke to really think about it. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and you called me, and you were just cracking up, just like this. Like, yeah. I can't believe we yeah. didn't think of that. Of course. It was like <laughs> Captain Obvious. So that's my one, that's my one contribution <laughs> no, to that no, song composition. It was the word Mary. Word. I thought of the term Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was perfect. And, and that was a fun track. It really was. And we, we put the kitchen sink on that one. That's just Well, you started it. With ukulele, and that was another thing that was a, a new wrinkle since right. we had worked together. You right. had played all your songs when we made change a thing on acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. but these were very much ukulele inspired. It's the happiest instrument. It really it's, is. It's <laughs> the happiest time of year. It is. They go hand in hand. Can be. Yeah. Yeah. Can be so sad. that one was super fun and a funny little story, and wanted to give you credit for that word because it's well, a, it's it's a small I, word. I, but I, with I the didn't big think impact. of it. I didn't think of it. That, that was out there in the ether. I promise. <laughs> Uh, so we did that's an original, and then we did peace on earth, which is also an original. Beautiful song. And uh, and you know, beautiful song. You should listen to that, and I mean, you should listen to all of it. But that song just blew me away when oh. I first heard it. And I, I mean, think, I think we captured it well. I love Lars's mix of that song. Oh it's yeah, really good. Yeah, Lars Gordonson uh, did the mix on that, and it was great. Uh, a lot of fun. And it's still like every time we we kind of redid some stuff this year, and we went back to peace on us and went, it's perfect. Like yeah, we, then we didn't add anything to it. Yeah, right. It was great. And then we did low how a rose there blooming. Very cool. Um, funny story about that one is I was trying to find you know I wanted to do four songs to do a, an EP, and so I just typed in like you know obscure Christmas songs, and or or you know. Or maybe it was, I can't even remember what, but I just Googled it and I didn't hear, I never heard it. You never heard that song in church. But I had read, I read the lyrics and I was just totally blown away by the lyrics. And so I was like, I'm not going to listen to it. I'm just going to write all new music. So I had no previous knowledge. Yeah, no points of reference. Right, for the melody. And I remember when I wrote it, it was kind of um, ba, ba. It was like oh la, right, bum, it was bum, how, yeah. Bum, ba, oh, yeah yeah yeah. It there, was it was like an Oktoberfest. Yeah, song. and it was like so painful to get through because it's it took a, a long time. Yeah, there's a lot of words and it just didn't really drive. And that was your critique of that one. You said, you know, I think the melody is there, and but it's just if you can come up with a different way to present the the rhythm and the and the oh, delivery. I love that. And so I, I went home and did my homework. And this is something that I've loved about working with Robert is you're a great teacher. Um, and I really do credit a lot of like my growth as an artist to your, oh, that's very to kind. your um, influence and your, your willingness to, to do things like that. Allow, allow me the creative freedom to come up with ideas, but, um, but also giving direction and guidance. So well, that's the fun part. And well, when we made that one sound like, you know, that one sounds like now what? because it was pre this. Yeah. It sounds like Peaky Blinders. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very, yeah. it's, it's very oh, rock man. and roll. It's it a is. very cool track. And so, yeah, so I came back and I was just like, what if we just did like this four in the floor, sun mm-hmm. of dry? And you were like, yes. Right. And that one also has a lot going on in the production. And the cool thing was, is Cullen. Mm. Uh, Cullen quotes the, the original melody. Yeah, the so at end. the very end, he has the what is it? The it was an accordion. Accordion, yeah, and he's playing the original. Um, Lo, how the is it? But he's doing it in that timing. And then we had Steve McAllister on mm-hmm. the bass for all of those. Um, and, and that's then, Rick on drums, correct? And Rick, yeah, oh, Rick was on drums for all of those. And then Oh Holy Night, we did. Um, a really intimate version of it and it, we tracked it live we kind of did a quick one on that it was like hey let's throw in one more song let's yeah. do something we, we record live yeah. together I think I played you played the ukulele, ukulele. And I you played, played guitar. guitar just around one mic which is a little dangerous but yeah. we, we captured it but yeah. you ended up not liking that yeah, over time over, over time. time it just didn't sit with me as well as the other uh-huh. ones did I was found myself like Fast forwarding through that one—that's a bad sign. Skipping it, yeah. So I really wanted to redo it, and the thing that I noticed about it that I really didn't like is I wasn't as true to the melody. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like took a lot of liberties. I, I, per, I overperformed it basically, and uh, 
And it's so it, not an uncommon problem, <laughs> <laughs> especially with Christmas music. I yeah. mean, this is the thing. When you honored <laughs> the melody more, yeah. it did something. And it also brought something else out in you as a singer. Hmm. When you sang Holy Night and honored the original right. melody, it's beautiful. And it's still very much you. Hmm. It's not stiff. It's not like you're not sitting in my old you know, Presbyterian church at home. No, nothing personal. <laughs> Mary <laughs> Jo, nothing presence. personal, Mary Jo. But um, <laughs> it's a little bit, it's yeah. still very much contemporary. Yeah, yeah. And I think the thing I like about the new version is it, the, the other one was more ukulele driven. And this is more just kind of a, an acoustic plotting the melody. And then we brought in Matt Mollica. Matt, right. I couldn't do, remember his last name. Matt yeah, Malika. to do the the B3. Yeah. Right. The cool thing about this B3 is it's you have like the actual where the keys are played and all of the technology is happening. And then you run a chord and you plug it into this, I don't know what Leslie it's Cabinet. Leslie Cabinet. And there's a speaker inside yeah, it's and it's rotating. It's rotating. So that's how you get the wah, 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 yeah. like that. Yeah, the faster slow. Correct. Yes. And he had the whole set up yeah, yeah and so he's working the speed so when you hear that while we watched the ma- <laughs> while we watched the masters <laughs> while, the, while his son and my son watched the masters on tv and yeah. my son explained it to matt's son yeah what golf was yeah <laughs> how yeah. you played and why it so was, it was pretty it was a casual and which takes me to another interesting point about your recordings mm-hmm. this is a perfect day for making Christmas music if you're with Miranda because it's 70 degrees and it's balmy in Texas. (laughs) That's true. So almost all this music was made in the heat of summer. In the heat of summer or on a balmy fall fall day, right? Yeah. At first, it was hard for me to get into the headspace of making Christmas in August. Right. But uh, eventually, I got got better at it as as time went on. Well, once once you got to hear it in the holiday season. So that was 2014, the first four tracks that we ever released. And tomorrow we will be looking at what we released in 2015, which was Christmas Glow and Winter Wonderland. So if you're digging it, tune back in tomorrow and uh, you'll be able to stream those two new tracks along with the four that, that you're able to stream today. And we'll just keep adding until we get to the full release on November 16th. The show's at the Saxon Pub, 6 p.m., Um, Would love to see you there.